The back of the cardigan is knitted in halves, a left back and a right back. They are exactly the same, except they are mirror images of one another. Okay, let's put this cast on rag on the machine. I'm starting on black needles just because it's going to be easiest for me to find my place if I do that. And you just wait till each one comes up, pop on the next loop, and keep going. For some reason my handle had a stiff spot. I'll have to look into that in a minute. But for the moment we just keep casting on. Now obviously we need to do this and having done so the first row of real stuff will be very easy to knit. But in the in between the real yarn and this rag, which can be reused for all four pieces of the cardigan and other future projects as well. In between that, we need to run a row or two, at least two, preferably four, of waste yarn that will be truly wasted. Having made the rag, though, we won't have to waste so much. Okay, we took a brief break to fix the handle, which was loose, and the clamp to the table was loose. So now things should be a little easier to manage. Getting a loop onto each needle. Now I made quite a few, however many I was able to make loops on this cast on rag. I don't need that many stitches. So when I reach the correct number of stitches, I can just leave the remainder of the rag hanging. It's not going to be in the way and it won't even be near the work for very long. By the time I'm done with waste yarn rows, there won't be anything to it. There we go. And I think that's all I need. I'm going to go off camera and count up. Now it's time to begin with our waste yarn. So I'm going to go back the other direction, making sure that my loop from my waste yarn actually goes down as a stitch properly should so that the next real stitch will be properly formed. And I noticed that I had a little problem with a few of these stitches. That one popped off. So I'm going to need to go slowly and make sure that we actually establish knitting. And that one I wasn't careful enough and I split it. So we're going to go like this all the way around carefully making sure well actually it's not all the way around that could mislead you because I'm not making a tube I'm making a flat panel make sure there's a loop from the red yarn my waist yarn my cast on rag actually the black and white is my other waist yarn so there's a loop from the cast on rag properly seated see that one tried to escape but it just doesn't know who it's dealing with that needs to be properly seated, one per needle. There's another mistake I made. And then we get a real stitch in the needle, and that should be the end of our woes. Around I go. See you when I'm done. All right, you catch me at the end of my first completed row of the waist yarn. And back we go. And now really it's time for me to put this yarn into the yarn feeder and make life easier. Never, never, never forget to close the yarn gate. If you do, it will get broken. And I do know from experience. Now, just to make sure everything knits off, I'm going slowly and providing a little downward pressure with my left hand and cranking with my right. People have asked me if it matters which hand, and I would say no, not even which direction. Just get so that you can comfortably crank around and do what you need to do with some hand or other, and you'll be fine. I'm going to do two additional rows 
with the black and white yarn. This lifting it off of the needle next to the actual last working needle is going to make a neater edge. The whole sweater will not have to go this slowly, of course. I'm just using an abundance of caution to get set up. Now, do you remember in the earlier video when I talked about the fact that the, um, the sweater is made in four pieces and that the two back pieces should be mirror images of each other, as should the two front pieces be mirror images of each other. And that in order to make that happen, you want to start on the opposite side, or the opposite edge of the work, so that you can be where you need to be in order to make armhole decreases and make the work perfectly even. Here is the easiest way to achieve it. You do not have to think ahead a great deal or do anything fancy. My arm, first armhole decrease is going to be on this side of the work if the yarn is over here. So if I stop now, having knitted, I think, four rows. No, I haven't. I've knitted three. So if I stopped now, I could make my armhole over here. Actually, if I were going to do that, I would make it five rows I, because I think I will wish I had the extra waist yarn later for a completely different step. So now I'm going to go back and knit my fourth row. That'll put my working yarn, oops, I didn't get that stitch knitted. It'll put my working yarn on the other side of the work and that way the armhole will be easy to put over there. That is because I'm using an even number of rows. I'm going to use 80 rows from the hem to the underarm. So obviously if I start on the right edge, I'll end on the right edge. If I were using 81, starting on the right would end me on the left. But using an even number is usually an option and just mentally easier. So, I'll stop here and change to my main yarn. However, for my next piece, I will want to make the armhole decreases on the other side, so I will knit one additional row of waist. It doesn't really matter, we're going to remove it, and that means that since it's easier for me to hang running this way when I hang my rag, I can do it that way for all the pieces. One more thing that I wanted to tell you. I like the idea of the cast on rag, but it is not essential. You could have just started down here somewhere. You don't need this much waist yarn, but another couple inches and just knitted waist yarn in the usual fashion in order to get enough to hang on to and to know that things are knitting smoothly. We will need it because we're going to take live stitches off of the waist yarn to work our crocheted hem eventually but you do not have to have a cast on rag. I just think it's a time saver. All right, now I'm gonna start knitting actual sweater. Before doing anything, I'm gonna clear the row counter. Happily, mine works. I've heard there are issues with them, but if I clear it, I should be able to trust it when it tells me it's got 80 rows. Let's begin. That needle came up, but I don't really need it, so I'm going to rotate around, not catching till I do need one. Now, that's the one I really want to start on. And here we go. When I am knitting hats, I go pretty fast. If I have a yarn that's not giving any trouble and I'm not doing anything fancy like Fair Isle, I just go round and round. When I'm knitting flat panels, going a little bit more slowly works better and actually is faster in the long run for me. 
when you go back and forth, you have to stop at the end of every row anyway. And there is some potential for mishap. And fixing it later takes a lot longer than just avoiding it. Also, eventually, there's going to be quite a lot of fabric built up in the center here because I'm going to knit 20 inches. So all in all, I think my best bet is going to be to go a bit slowly. Now, see what just happened there? There are lots of good videos on knitting flat panels, so I'm not going to go into great detail. But we do not want this edge stitch to be caught under here because it makes a sloppy edge. If it happens, as it just did to me, release it and then pull the slack out before continuing. It's supposed to go under that little red bar between stitches, but there's not actually a stitch for it to be between. So if at the edge it goes under that red bar, it simply makes a loop. All right, I have finished all of my rows to the underarm. And now it is time to decrease four stitches all at once. And here is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to remove the main yarn and start knitting backwards. Well, not backwards, but towards the other side. That needle will come up, and I'm going to put that stitch onto waste yarn. Next needle, there's two decreases. Let the next needle come up, lift that stitch, once I can get a hold of it, there it is. And since my number of stitches to decrease is four, this will be my last one. In the design section video, we've talked about the fact that yours might not be the same one. I can just leave these there to crochet off later and neaten them up later, but they're no longer in work now. Now I've got my main yarn still attached, and I think what I'm going to do, thought this over, there's more than one way to do it. I'm going to break the yarn, leaving a substantial yarn tail so that I can do that finishing later. Now I'm going to re-thread it with a fresh end that will make an end of the yarn at the underarm, but I think it's going to be easiest that way anyway. Now making sure that I don't lose my yarn tail. I'm going to be knit, go knitting the other direction on the remaining stitches. This row is normal. And nothing will happen at the other end that's abnormal for the back because we only decrease at the underarm. On the fronts, we'll also start decreasing at the neck edge to make that V-neck. But for this piece, we just knit back, because our center back, which is here, our center back is straight up the middle of the back. And when we get back over here, it's time to decrease one stitch after I knit it. That's because I'm knitting, I'm decreasing one stitch every other row six times. Again, your number could be different. We could lift this stitch and place it on the next needle and try to knit both off together, which is a classic technique in hand and machine knitting. On the Addy, I'm not that confident that I'll be able to get it to do what I want, so I'm just going to take that stitch and put it onto waste yarn. Tighten it up so I don't have a big massive hole. Make sure that I position correctly to begin knitting back on the remaining stitches, which now are one fewer in number than they were. Double checking that all is as it should be, and here we go.
again at the far edge of the work, the center back. Nothing exciting happens. We just make sure that our stitch pulls down and our yarn tail is snug enough. And back we go. And I'm going to thread one more stitch after knitting the edge stitch. That edge stitch will now get threaded, threaded onto the same piece of waste yarn. Try to do it left-handed so you can see it better because I know where the camera is. Excuse the clumsiness. Same as last time, back we go. Do not let another needle get into the act. They'll try. Snug that up, and we're off. This time I knitted to and fro off camera. I've set up this stitch to be easy to pick up, and onto the waist yarn it goes. So now I have three on my waist yarn, and only three more to pick up, because that's my number of decreases in total, is six. All six decreases are now on my waist yarn and I can just drop it down nothing should bother it I'm not done with the vertical sweep of the armhole yet I've only done 92 rows and my total row count I think is 116 so I'm going to go back and forth until I reach that point I'll do a few rows with you and then we'll both go finish our armholes and I'll meet you at the shoulder. This is just exactly what we've been doing except we are now on fewer needles than we started out. And when we go to do the other side of the back, and the same will be true on the front, everything will be just as we have done it, but my decreases will occur on this side and the right hand edge is the one that won't get any special treatment on the other side of the back. On the other side of the front, in both cases, we'll start doing neckline decreases. Okay, see you in a few minutes. All right, row 116 is accomplished. And I do want to be able to use the rest of my main yarn to bind off with. So I'm going to just drop it in the middle because now I'm going to remove on waste yarn. Most likely you've done this before, so there's no need for me to make a big fuss about it. But we take off the stitches in the order that they come up. Because of where the camera needs to be, I need to use my left hand, and I'm really right-handed, so forgive my apparent clumsiness. I can get it done, I just can't get it done with panache. And we're going to go all the way around, just like this. Sometimes, see what I've got now? Two needles are up enough that I can probably get both of those stitches off like that. Come on you sneaky stitch. And on around. And here we are. Shoulder stitches on waist yarn. Vertical sweep of the armhole. The decreases. This is not going inward as it seems, it's just happening to roll there. So those are the decreases, those are the stitches to be bound off all at once, and I'll use the yarn tail to do that. Let's go ahead and do our binding off, then this piece will be ready. These stitches held on this waist yarn may tend to shrink a little bit. If they do, you can do this to loosen them up. You may have to grab the waist yarn and pull on them first. Now here's my working yarn tail that I'm going to bind off with. Chain stitch. 
trying to miss the waist yarn into the stitch pull through the two loops into the true stitch that puts two loops back pull through you have one left one loop left in pull through makes a very neat finish now we'll move right on up to the first decrease stitch in this area you want to keep it neat and firm on the other hand remember where it is this is an area that the garment has to flex and we may need to work with it a little bit to fit it into the or to allow the arm what am I saying to allow the sleeve to fit into the armhole that's where I'm going with that so you do not want to make it as tight as you possibly can because that just doesn't give you enough to work with in either instance see how I'm not distorting the fabric we do have a big stitch right where that one right where there's a yarn tail but we'll tighten it up later into the stitch pull through both loops and only one to go into the stitch pull through both loops now should I somehow get this totally wrong and it just isn't the right size it is entirely possible to remove it later and do it in a more appropriate way if I discover that I just haven't. We're pulling out the waist yarn and there's our decreased underarm. The shoulder is the same thing but it's easier because we don't have to worry about the fact that everything slants and shoulders generally you don't want them tight because you don't want the fabric to pull in but they are intended to give stability to the shoulder area of the garment. Remember, this is holding all the weight of all the fabric. There we go. Into the stitch, pull through. I was not terribly careful how I threaded onto waist yarn. And if you do that too, some of your stitches may face one way and some the other. For a neat bind off, make sure you look at how they're facing Here's an example. See, I've got a little twist in that one. I don't want to go in from here the most logical way because this is the face of the stitch, the knit side of the stockinette, and that's what I'm working into. And this time, I do want to go in the most obvious way because I had the stitch oriented differently on the waist yarn. Again, if I should get this uneven or be unhappy about how it looks in the shoulder seam, all is not lost. I can undo this chain and redo it. The last thing that I need to do is to get the cast on rag free to work on my next piece. Here's the yarn tail for the cast on rag over here. It's already started to release itself and that's actually just fine because I want these free to hang on my next project. And I could pick it out neatly, but to save time, I can come to the other end and very carefully, only getting the real waist yarn, not the cast on rag, make a snip. Now find out which end of that snip goes to the very first row, which is this one. And usually you can give it a tug. It will gather up as it's doing for a minute and then it will pull straight out and voila now I can use this again and here's the reason I wanted at least four rows of waist yarn this yarn is left holding these live stitches and we'll be crocheting into them as the final finish on our jacket if we only do two rows sometimes they unravel themselves and that is very annoying so four is normally enough. If you're worried about it, do more.